Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you my review of the DJI R3 Mini Gimbal. This is a compact and lightweight uh, motorized gimbal. It weighs in at only 1.9 pounds or 850 grams, but it can support a payload of up to 4.4 pounds or two kilograms. In other words, about as much as what most people actually need. It has a built-in battery built into the handle. It's a lithium ion with a 2,450 mAh capacity. Uh, it can be charged via USB-C. It takes about two, two and a half hours to charge it up and it gives you a 10 hour runtime. One of the features I love is that we do have a 1.4 inch OLED touchscreen and app control there on the back that allows you to control various functions and to have some actual feedback and to be able to touch and to get right at different menu functions, which is a vast improvement over what I've seen in the past. Today's episode is brought to you by Phantom Wallet, the minimalist modern wallet that is now even better with the new Phantom X that is crafted from aluminum right here in Canada. It is 22% smaller and 35% lighter, while still making it easy to access your cards and money when you need them, thanks to their unique fanning mechanism. You could even customize your wallet due to its modular design, with accessories like a money clip, cash holder, ID display, and even Chipolo and AirTag tracking integration. Visit store.phantomwallet.com to check out their unique sizes, styles, and finishes that span from aluminum to wood to carbon fiber, and use code DUSTIN15 for 15% off when you're ready to check out. So today's review is really going to take the form of me talking about the things that I like and the things that I don't like. As that, you know, the basic concept of these gimbals is pretty well established at this point. I've been reviewing motorized gimbals for uh, probably six or seven years at this point. But there are some things that stood out to me from the R3 Mini that I want to highlight as part of this. And I'm just going to show you footage as we go along because that's really what this is all about. So the first thing that I love is that we have Bluetooth control over camera functions. You do a quick Bluetooth pair from your camera to the gimbal itself and then you can avoid doing anything with any kind of wire connections which I've definitely had to do in the past and so it gives me control over some of the really important functions here that allow me to get better footage including having a starting the record recording uh, up front I can uh, program this dial for different things including for the clear zoom uh, within Sony cameras which is a really useful thing to have on tap and so I really love that Bluetooth control and that it just works it, every time I start everything back up I don't have to repair it's just ready to go I also love the fact that I saw really good, uh, stable, smooth uh, motor control, even when I had a heavier payload on there, you know, something like the Sony a7 IV and the 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 G Master Mark II lens, which I shot a lot of this footage with. I had zero issues in terms of it being able to stabilize that, even when I was doing in, in more complicated movements. I also like the fact that the included tripod here, that it easily becomes an grip extension and so it just gives me a little bit more leverage or maybe a place to put a second hand if I so desire. And so as a byproduct, I did find that the combination of it being lightweight and having that grip extender, that I really found that I had much less back strain when getting footage. Some of these gimbals, I have felt it kind of right in between my shoulder blades, just kind of stabilizing out away from your body that after a while it's, you know, you start to ache and tighten up. I didn't really notice that using this. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that it is just light enough and ergonomic enough that it works quite well. I did note the touchscreen here, and I really do appreciate that the controls here are really, they're, they're logical and easy to access. You're not using some kind of wheel to try to scroll in between things. And so, for example, if I just tap here for the follow speed, I've got three options on screen. I just tap what I want and back I can go. I can make a quick uh, choice between the kind of follow mode that I'm going to, to use, so on and so forth. I just have really quick direct control over things and so I don't waste time trying to find what I'm looking for. Also, I think that the price point here is very reasonable. Um, I got this from Vlogs Fan, and you can get it for about $359, a little bit less with a coupon code there. And so that's really a reasonable price for a device that is going to be really, really useful. And so a reasonable price, high portability, uh, just makes it an easy gimbal to use and, and to bring along. Let's talk about a few things that I don't love about it. 
My biggest complaints actually have to do with the balancing process. I found that while we do have both locks and levers there, so you can lock something into place and then you have a lever that you can use to either loosen or to tighten it, what I found is that it's the actual sliding of things where there's just a little too much friction and I found it a little too difficult to make kind of fine adjustments. So you use enough force where all of a sudden it slides a fair bit, but it's hard to have just enough force to make it slide just a little bit. And often, you know, getting a precise balance is a matter of just millimeters of movement. And so I, I found it a little bit frustrating in the adjustment process. The other thing is also connected to that, and that is that we are tied to a proprietary quick release plate to use it. I would really have loved to see something more ARCA compatible. Uh, for example, I use, I have on my cameras at all times, I have Peak Design capture plates on there. I would have loved to see something compatible with that where I don't have to mess with taking off my standard quick release plate, mounting their own quick release plate, and only then being able to use it. So just a little bit of a tweak that I would have liked to have seen changed. The other thing, uh, my final complaint here is considering that this is such a portable unit, I really think it's a missed opportunity to not include some kind of carrying case for it. Even if it's something fairly simple, it's a downer for something so portable that now I need to come up with, it's something I could bring along, but I need to come up with a carry solution to where I'm not damaging it as a part of the process. So fortunately, my list of complaints is fairly brief. And the good news is that if you shoot with a similar setup, those frustrations that I described with uh, you know getting things balanced, fortunately that goes away really quickly if you're using something with some repeatability to it. So who should buy this? I would say those that don't need to go overkill in their gimbal, which frankly I think is a lot of people. This is enough of a payload and enough of a gimbal for most people in most situations. Sure, go bigger if you need to do some really complex shots, you know, where you're fully rotating the camera or something similar like that. But if you're looking for a stable platform to do various focus follow, uh, things like that, this is going to do everything that you need. And I found that it really does a good job. It Everything functions the way that it should. And the fact the fact that it is lighter and cheaper than most competitors makes this DJI R3 Mini gimbal, I think, a really compelling package for a lot of people. I'm certainly enjoying it. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you look in the description down below, there are buying links there if you'd like to go and get more information or purchase one for yourself. Beyond that, there's linkage to follow myself or Craig on social media to become a patron or to get channel merchandise. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and let the light in.